Hi, Todd Dunn here on October 4th, 2019. It's about 1.40 in the afternoon and today I'm aboard my 1972 Allied 36 Sequester. And it's a little too cold to go sailing today. Right now it's 55 degrees on board the boat and out in the cockpit in the wind I think it's 48. So that's uh, just a little too chilly for me. So, what do I want to talk about today since I'm not going out on the boat? Well, basically I thought I'd talk about the age-old uh, conflict of wood versus fiberglass boats. Now there are a number of other building materials for boats, metal, steel, and aluminum and also ferro-cement, but I have no experience with uh, ferro-cement boats at all, and the only uh, steel uh, or aluminum boats I have experience with are ships, so uh, I'm not really going to talk about them. I'm going to restrict myself to wood versus fiberglass. And why do I feel I can talk about that? Well, as you know, I own a wooden boat, my 1936 uh, 33-foot wooden powerboat Tortuga, and I own this fiberglass boat, my 1972 Allied Princess 36 Sequester. My history with both wooden and fiberglass boats goes back a little. The first boats that I went out on back in the 50s were wooden boats. They were just rowboats. Uh, we started out with a plywood pram when I was about five years old. And a couple years later, we upgraded to a 14-foot Carvel planked cedar rowboat that I rowed all over the place on Hood Canal in Washington State. And then later, I started uh, sailing fiberglass boats in my teens in the 60s and toward the end of the 60s I went briefly back to wood when I built myself a wooden sailboat. Now back then I wasn't uh, too skilled at caulking and uh, launched the boat and it almost sank but fortunately a wooden boat can't actually sink if it isn't ballasted so I was able to get it back to shore and uh, do a little reading and then caulk it properly and got a little sailing out of it. And in the early 70s, I sailed on uh, some larger 44-foot uh, wooden sailboats and also started sailing on bigger fiberglass sailboats. So my uh, experience with wooden boats spans more than 60 years and my experience with fiberglass boats spans more than 50 years. So I've had some practical experience with the boats and I have also spent a lot of time working on both wooden and fiberglass boats. I have uh, built or participated in building uh, three fiberglass boats. One uh, small dinghy I built myself. Another dinghy which I have uh, just hauled out for the season. I built with the assistance of a friend who is a professional boat builder. and. I also helped build a 26-foot fiberglass sailboat. I've also spent a lot of time working on wooden boats. Uh, Tortuga is a good example of that. I have owned that boat now for 12 years, and I think I have probably put about five to 6,000 hours of labor into the boat. So I have uh, done everything you can do on a wooden boat. So. So that's my experience level. So I think I am qualified to give you my opinion and have it mean a little bit. So, wood versus fiberglass. Which is better? Well, that depends on you. It depends on what you want to use the boat for. They both have their pluses and minuses. Let's look at just the most basic thing first, and that's the hulls. A fiberglass boat like this one 
has a one-piece hull. In other words, the hull was built all at the same time and it's all laminated out of fiberglass using polyester resin and once the resin is all cured, the hull is a single piece. This particular boat also has an encapsulated keel so there is no external ballast. The lead ballast is inside the hull and then it's glassed over on the top so that even if I hit a rock and punch a hole in the keel, uh, it can't sink. It'll only get a little water in around the lead ballast. And I can just let that drain out and do a repair if I need to. So some fiberglass boats, like this one, are very stoutly built. And with a one part or monocoque hull, they're very strong and stiff. In addition to the uh, one part hull, this boat has full length stringers on the hull just uh, at the water line. And that makes the hull extremely stiff. And when you take a boat like this one over a big steep wave, you might put the bow up in the air. And when the, but when the boat falls back down onto the water, uh, it doesn't deform. It doesn't twist, it doesn't bend, it just slams back into the water. And uh, it can be a little uncomfortable, but it doesn't hurt the boat at all. So a fiberglass boat like this is very tough and can take a lot more from the ocean than you can. And the boat will just punch right through. What about a wooden boat? Well, let's look at Tortuga. Tortuga is just under 33 feet long, and if you count all the screws, uh, the hull probably has about 7,000 parts. That's right, 7,000 individual pieces that are held together by wood screws. And so that makes a boat that is relatively more flexible than a fiberglass boat. And in fact, wooden boats, when they're in the seaway, work when you pitch up, the whole boat bends a little bit, and when you slam back down, it bends back the other way. And part of that bending is accommodated by the planks slipping back and forth a little bit against each other. And some of that movement is resisted by the caulking cotton that's hammered in between the planks to provide additional friction between them. And also, once the planks swell up from being in the water, they are pressed together pretty firmly, but they can still move relative to one another. If the caulking is a little loose and the boat isn't swelled up as well as it could be, the planks can move quite a bit. And the result of that is that the fasteners that hold the planks to the frames will loosen up. And that allows the planks to move more, and that allows the fasteners to loosen up a little more, and on and on. It's a positive feedback situation, and the boat will get very flexible, and eventually will start taking on water through the seams between the planks as they start to become more and more flexible and move more and more relative to one another. So a wooden boat, because of the way it's built, and I'm talking about a Carvel planked wooden boat here, not a plywood boat, which is a very different uh, uh, beast, but a Carvel planked wooden boat will flex, will bend, will twist, and that has both negative and positive impacts on the boat. The negative impact is that flexing of the hull, bending and twisting of the hull, is, uh, as I said, going to loosen up the fasteners and basically cause the boat to leak more and eventually it could cause uh, serious damage if you don't keep your boat tightly fastened and you know, properly caulked up. On the other hand, that movement in the hull absorbs some of the forces that the boat experiences from the ocean, from waves. So those forces that are absorbed by the hull 
don't get transmitted to you. So wooden boats have a relatively soft ride in a seaway. That's a contrast to pretty much all fiberglass boats, which are very stiff and don't bend and don't flex much, if at all. And consequently, all of the impact and all of the forces uh, are transmitted from the ocean through the boat to you. So a fiberglass boat has a little bit more strenuous, if you will, ride. And that really shows up if you're on a boat for a long time. For example, if you're on a wooden boat all day and standing up a lot uh, at the helm, for example, and you're on a, a similar fiberglass boat for the same amount of time standing up, you'll find that you'll get more tired on the fiberglass boat than you will on the wood boat, simply because the wood boat absorbs forces that would be transmitted to you on the fiberglass boat and would cause your body to have to work harder. So that's a plus for the wooden boat. The negative, of course, is that because of the way the wooden boat is built, it is uh, intrinsically more fragile than a fiberglass boat. So if you take a wooden boat out into really rough waves, the hull is going to work, uh, it's going to loosen up, it's going to start to leak, and if it's really extreme conditions, you can actually pop a plank off, and when that happens, well, the boat sinks. Now a fiberglass boat, just in a seaway, uh, unless it's really, really bad, or the bolt is lightly built, it's going to be able to take it. I mean, on a lightly built boat, you might actually uh, get some movement between different parts of the bolt, largely things like this bulk, a bulkhead like this and the hull, because bulkheads in general are attached to the hull with fiberglass tabbing. And if the tabbing is light duty and the hull is not very stiff, a very light hull, you can get some flexing and that actually can work a bulkhead loose. And when that happens, it's bad. The boat isn't necessarily going to sink, but uh, it starts to lose its structural uh, stiffness and things can go downhill from there. But fiberglass boats, in general, unless you uh, capsize them, will most of the time will stay on top of the water as opposed to under the water, which is a big plus. And as I said, a fiberglass boat can normally take a lot more than you can. So you can get really beat up in a fiberglass boat where a wood boat in the same situation, the boat might get beat up, but you will have a more comfortable ride. Okay, fiberglass boats also are generally a little bit noisier. Fiberglass is an excellent sound transmitter. It's also an ex excellent thermal transmitter. In other words, fiberglass is a lousy insulator. So if the water is cold, it will usually be cold on a fiberglass boat. And you'll hear every little slap of water against the hull. Wood boats uh, don't transmit sound quite as well. And wood is a better insulator than fiberglass, so a wood boat will tend to be a little warmer and uh, in cold water, and it won't be as noisy. You'll still hear water slapping against the hull, but it won't be as loud or as extreme as it would be on a fiberglass boat. So that's another plus for the wood boat. It just depends on, you know, which one you like better. Now, a lot of people get a lot more peace of mind being on a fiberglass boat because they can be quite confident the boat isn't going to just fall apart into 7,000 pieces, which can actually happen on a wooden boat. I know a couple boats where severe problems have developed and the boat basically just broke up. Fiberglass boat, that doesn't happen very often at all, unless you hit something hard. So, what about maintenance and repairs? 
Well, fiberglass is a relatively easy material to work. It does take some skill, but it doesn't take as much as you might think. You can learn how to do acceptable repairs that will hold up on a fiberglass boat quite quickly. And the materials are relatively uh, easy to get, fiberglass cloth and resin of some sort. What's tricky on a fiberglass boat is cosmetics. Because fiberglass boats always have lots of nice curved surfaces, it can be difficult and, and time consuming to get a repair to match the original curvature of the boat. And it can take a lot of fairing compound and a lot of sanding and then maybe gel coating and then a lot more sanding and buffing before the boat looks good. And if you're not pretty skilled at uh, fiberglass boat cosmetics, you'll be able to see where the repair was done. I know this boat has a few repairs in various parts of it uh, that I did when I wasn't very skilled with fiberglass and you can definitely see them. Uh, now, the, in contrast, the more recent repairs that I've done are invisible because I finally learned how to handle the cosmetics. But the skill level required to do a simple repair is not very high and pretty much any DIY person can do it. Making it look good, that's another matter. What about a wooden boat? Well, wooden boats uh, require basic carpentry skills to repair. And there are also some boat specific techniques that you need to learn. For example, shaping a plank, uh, bending a frame, bending a plank onto the frames. These are all things that you need to learn how to do if you're going to repair a wooden boat. But once you get the plank onto the boat, things like caulking, paying the seams with seam compound, and then sanding everything out and painting are pretty straightforward. And it is, in my experience anyway, easier to create an invisible repair on a wooden boat than it is on a fiberglass boat. Also, uh, on a wooden boat, you can have major, major repairs required. For example, when I bought the Tortuga, it was missing about 80 feet of planking below the waterline. And about uh, three-fourths of the frames or ribs were completely rotted out. So the hull was just barely held together, largely by... Uh, paint and caulking and the, basically the boat was not seaworthy when I bought it. If we would put it in the water it would have just sunk right away. So I with very limited uh, wooden boat experience was able to repair everything that needed to be repaired and get the boat back in the water. It did take a little learning but not that much. Now, a fiberglass boat with major, major damage can be a lot harder task to put it all back together, largely because you've got these nice rounded curves on the hull that you have to try to reproduce in some way, which usually means building a pattern uh, and uh, some sort of form that you can lay up fiberglass over and then remove the pattern or form. And uh, it can be pretty time consuming and actually quite difficult to make a good large scale structural repair. Whereas on a wooden boat, it's, it's uh, not that hard, it just takes quite a while. So, you know, if you have basic carpentry skills and are patient, you can repair just about anything on a wooden boat. On a fiberglass boat, you're going to need some fiberglass specific skills that are not basic carpentry skills. And you're going to have to uh, learn those skills before you can make any kind of major repair. And there are also a number of other types of repairs that you might need to make on a fiberglass boat that you would never do on a wooden boat. For example, decks on fiberglass boats 
like this one, the deck and cabin house structure up here. Uh, although it's one piece, inside that one piece are multiple layers. There's a lower skin of fiberglass. On top of that, there is a layer of core material. In this boat, the core is end grain balsa wood. And then there's another layer of fiberglass on top of it to create a sort of sandwich construction. And if, uh, due to uh, damage to the boat or uh, somebody drilling holes without thinking about it uh, into the deck or the top of the cabin house, uh, that can cause water to leak in. And if you have a balsa cord hull, water can rot the balsa wood, which destroys the sandwich construction and you have to replace the balsa wood uh, with either a new balsa wood or with some other coring material to do a repair and you have to learn the skill involved in dismantling that, doing the repair, and then making the repair disappear through cosmetics. But core decomposition, rotting, and delamination where the top skin or the bottom skin breaks its bond to the core is a big problem on fiberglass boats. And if you're going to repair them, you have to know how to fix that kind of problem. And you have to know what the materials are. That doesn't happen on wood boats. The enemy on wood boats is rot first, and second, electrolytic corrosion if you have dissimilar metals below the waterline. Repairing a wooden boat, if you do it yourself, isn't that expensive unless you replace a lot of fasteners. The bronze screws that Tortuga is held together with cost over a dollar each. So if I have to replace a thousand fasteners, that's over a thousand dollars. The planks aren't that expensive. Locally they run around 50 cents a lineal foot for the planking stock. So if I replace uh, 50 feet of planking it costs me $25 for the wood. That's pretty cheap. On the other hand, uh, fiberglass boats uh, can be relatively expensive to repair just because of the cost of the fiberglass cloth and the fiberglass resin that you use to uh, basically stick the layers of cloth together. So depending on where the damage is, you might have to replace, you know, four, five, six, ten layers of fiberglass uh, fabrics and build the, and replace all the resin that held those fabrics together. And uh, those resins are quite expensive. Typically, depending on what you use, if you use polyester resin, if you're buying it in small quantities, it runs, you know, 50 to $70 a gallon. But if you use epoxy, which is a much better resin to use for repairs, simply because it creates better secondary bonds than polyester, uh, you're going to pay anywhere from $150 to $175 for a gallon of epoxy. So epoxy is and polyester resin are quite expensive and if you're doing a big repair you're going to go through a lot. And that uh, you know can get very expensive. So that basically is what I wanted to say today about wood boat versus fiberglass boat and I'll summarize again. Wood boats compared to an equivalent fiberglass boat are a little bit more fragile uh, and probably can't take as much of a beating as the equivalent fiberglass boat. In contrast, a wooden boat has a softer ride, maybe even a quieter ride because wood absorbs uh, the sound of passing through the water a little bit more than fiberglass does. It doesn't transmit that sound into the boat as much. And uh, that's a, that can be a factor, particularly on longer days. But you know, it comes down to what your preferences are. If you like a wooden boat and have the skills to maintain it, 
then it's a great boat for you. If you prefer fiberglass, maybe you don't like the idea of working on a wooden boat, don't have the carpentry skills, then a fiberglass boat is the way to go. And the, the only other thing I'd say is you can neglect a fiberglass boat for a long time. It will look crummy if you don't keep up on the cosmetics, keep it scrubbed down and, and touch up your varnish and paint and everything, but it will still work. On a wooden boat, if you let it go for say five or ten years, you're going to definitely have rot issues and uh, the boat may not even be seaworthy after you've let it go for five years, particularly if it's exposed to the elements during those five years. The reason is rainwater contains rot spores usually and those rot spores uh, will rot your wooden boat. Uh, there aren't any fiberglass rot spores so a little rainwater as long as you have your boat sealed up adequately will just run off. You will end up with a bit of a chalky surface on the fiberglass but that won't affect its structural integrity. So you know if you let your boat go, you would be better off if you owned a fiberglass boat than if you owned a wooden boat. Anyway, that's all I want to say. Just a quick uh, look at a couple of the uh, aspects of owning wood versus owning fiberglass. And with that, I'll say goodbye for today. If you enjoyed my little chat, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell to get the next and don't forget to click that notification. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click that notification bell so you'll get a notification of when my next exciting boating video comes out. Thanks for watching.